Hello everyone, today I wanted to show you the two methods I usually do to create hair on my character. I either use a curve or hair particles. First, we will see how we can do it with curves. For this first method, I first add a circle in the curve section and not in the mesh section. I like to rotate it in 90 degrees in the X axis so I can see the shape better. And then I add a path curve also in the curve section. Then in the object data property in the right tab, I'm going into the geometry tab and in the bevel section, I choose object and then with the pipette, I'm choosing the circle curve we created earlier. Don't forget to check the fair caps, otherwise you will have a hole in your shape. And now we can play with the shape. The important shortcuts, in my opinion, are Option S to size down the thickness of the shape and then Ctrl T to twist the curve and Alt T to reset the twist to its initial position. Most of the time I size down the top and the tip of the past curve. Then what I like to do to add more dimension to the air we have just created is to play with the circle curve shape. I click on it and go into edit mode and then I press A to select all of the points. Then I right click and choose subdivide. And then now I have one more point to play with. Now I can select some points and tweak them a bit. What I usually do is I grab some of them and then I break them inside the shape to create some curve to our shape. If you want more definition, you can add subdivision one more time to have more points to play with. And it's basically it for the curve method. Now you can place all of your curve around your head. I recommend you create a few circles that are different from each other. For example, one type for the back of the head and another type for the front of the head, for example if you are going to add bangs. And you can even add a third one to add some hair to create more dimension and details. Now for the second method we will use hair particles. This method is harder and longer but it's perfect if you want something realistic. So for this method what I usually do is that I click on my head and then in edit mode I choose the face where I know I want uh, the 
hair to appear and then with shift D I duplicate these faces and then I press P to separate the two mesh. This new mesh will serve as the scope. Now I can go into the particles property and then I press the plus to add a new particle system slot. I already rename it so you know which part of the hair it is. I choose hair instead of emitter and then I'm going to turn a few things around. First for the number, I only put one. Then I size down the hair length. Then in the render and path tab I check the bespline and then I put 5 in the step section. This will help us to have a more smooth hair. Now the second thing I do is that I go into the hair shape and I change the diameter root and tip. I usually set it up to 0.02 so we have thin and realistic hair. Now we can add children and choose simple. The first thing you have is the display amount and then the render amount. The best thing to do is to set the render amount to something like maybe 200, 300 either more or less depending on the power of your computer and then you can set the display amount to something like maybe 100 or 200 but this of course also depends on the power of your computer the goal is to find the right balance between something that will look like the render but also something that will not take forever to render in the viewport display so you can navigate freely without lagging then we will go into the clumping section and i check the use clump curve in this section, I drag down the top left and right point. And then I add a new one in the middle and I bring it upward. Now you can see we have a more natural shape. Now in the roughness section, we are going to add a little bit of random to our hair. I add a little bit of random and then a little bit of threshold. Here the threshold is how much the random will be affecting our hair. So these are the basic setup for the hair that I do. Of course, there is a ton of different way, um, tons of different setup that you can adjust. Also, this method is great for straight hair, but if you want curly or wavy hair, you would have to play around with the kink section. Now into the particle edit section, we can comb our hair. We can make them shorter or longer. And there is a few things that we can set here. First, I like to select the selection mode to point. And then in the comb section, I size down the distance to little or none because otherwise we would have kind of strange distance between the scope and the start of the hair. Now with the add tool, we are going to be able to add one by one the hair particle exactly where we want. Be careful to set the count to 1 instead of 10, otherwise it will automatically add the hair 10 by 10. A good thing to know also is that in the tool section that you can open with N, you can activate the mirror topology. It will save you a lot of time if you want a very symmetrical haircut. And I find it useful to use it only for the back of the head and not for the front. But what I also like to do is to not activate the mirror topology and to place my hair only on one side of my head and then to select all of it and to mirror them after. I like to do this because like this I can play freely with the hair and style the left and the right of the head in a different way. It's great if you want to add movement to the hair if your character is moving or if there is wind or something like this. Then I also check the children so I can see with what I'm working with. And if you want, you can also check interpolate. This will automatically place the new hair next to the one you have just created. If your hair is going crazy because it happened to me a lot, maybe it's because of your normals. So just click on your mesh, press A to select all of it. And then in edit mode, press Alt N, recalculate outside and it should work fine. I also like to add more points to have more control of the hair particles. So I press A to select all of the hair and then I right click and I choose subdivide.
If you are curious about how I styled the back of the head, then I left the time lapse of how I did it. But if you want to see directly how I did the front, then you can go to this time code. Another tips I forgot to mention is that you can check or uncheck the root position so you can adjust freely the roots of your hair, just like I did in the video. Once you have placed the hair on the back of your head, you can go ahead and add new particles to add the rest of the hair on the front. I usually use kind of the same properties, maybe with a little less children, because the hair tends to be a little bit more thinner here. Depending on the type of the hair you are adding, you can also play with the radius in the children tab. This will spray the hair or bring them closer together. And now you can add all of the hair you want. I think the key is to play with different kind of hair particles setup. Kind of the same way we did with the hair curve. The rest of the video is basically just me styling the front and the back of the head. I play a bit with the setup, but yeah, that's basically it. Once you have the main property set up, you would just have to style the hair the way you want.
So this was my two favorite way to do hair on character. As I said, of course, I'm sure there is a ton of other way to do hair, but this is the two ways that I like the most. Of course, as usual, if you have any question, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will do my best to help you and I will see you in another video. Bye.